Hi, uh, my name is Lynette Owens. Uh, this is Lyrical Opera Theater. This is our production. And Lyrical Opera Theater is uh, DBA um, under uh, my S Corporation, Lyrical Opera Products. So um, I'm showing you today how our setup for our production is so that um, if you would like to, you can buy our DVDs of the uh, rear screen projection scenery with containing super titles and the music for uh, Madama Butterfly Opera production. Or uh, throughout the years, I'll be producing more. So I wanted to show you our setup today. So this um, right here is just a regular DVD player. And inside of it, I have a DVD with the projection on it. Over here, this is an Epson projector. And this projector, the most important thing that you need to keep in mind when you get a projector is that it needs to have a wide angle lens. And the wider the angle is going to be the better uh, for you because it's going to give you more ability to either enlarge the picture that's on the screen or reduce the picture size. Um, when I got this projector, uh, I was told I needed to have 6,000 lumen projector and what I found, um, I bought one that's 4,200 and what I found is even that's too much. I've had to reduce uh, the brightness on the projector and uh, reduce everything else. Um, so that it doesn't end up too bright on our projection screen behind the scenes. We're going to be doing rear screen projection. Now, if you come in close, you would see that um, I have a video cord right here, video feed going from the DVD into the projector. And this is the video feed. And the video feed has to be right by the projector. So that's why we have the DVD player placed right by the projector because video feed deteriorates rapidly, like by the foot. So they have to, it has to be a relatively short cable. On the other hand, your sound can have long cables. And the sound is coming out of two very special cords right here on the back of the DVD player. The sound comes over into these two boxes and it's split off so we have a right and left these are our direct boxes um, so it comes into the back here and from the front I have XLR cables they're called um, these cables will protect your sound they're designed to make sure that no cell phone or radio interference gets into um, into your sound system. So they're expensive, but they're worth it if you need to stretch sound for um, any distance at all. I would definitely invest in XLR cables. Um, all right, so you can get an idea now of our projection. Um, this backstage area has to be dark. So you see we've, um, we've got our curtains pulled in here. At least they should be pulled in here. And what we do is we have all of the lights off backstage like this. Everything's quite dark so that if you look at the screen, um, you get a really nice, clear, clean projection. And I'm going to play uh, part of it so you can see how it looks from, this is a rear screen projection screen over here behind you is a rear screen projection screen. I'm going to push our, turn on our DVD player. We're loading, it's loading up the DVD. Okay, there it is. All I have to do is push play. And our production starts. Now, your projector has to be on, keep it on the screen. If you look at it, when you're looking at it from behind, this is a rear projection screen. The projection has to have its image flipped, and any projector can do that. All right. 
So your your image, as I just said, has to be flipped on your projector, projector so that when you come out front, and I'm going to turn on, uh, when you come out front, the projection's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be, the audience is going to be able to read it. So do the image flip now. So let's take a look at our screen here. I've got the lights turned on now. This projection screen, this projection screen I got on eBay um, from a company. Um, this screen is 18 feet wide and 10 and a half feet tall. Ideally, you'll have a screen that um, has no seams in it, like this one has no seams. It's all of one uh, piece of fabric. And surrounding, surrounding the screen um, is this black material that has rivets in it. We have it hooked on to the outside with Velcro straps um, because that gives us more flexibility. I just bought some big strips of Velcro and I, I cut them up the middle. Um, to create these straps. All right, now let's look at what this screen is placed on. This screen um, is being hung on. These are curtain rods. I got these online as well. I found this company on eBay as well. Um, these poles are designed to hold up um, big, tall curtains, let's say, like at some sort of convention center. Um, there's a big rubber weight down here. This is a 20 pound weight, and underneath that is the mechanism that this pole sits on. These poles can extend up uh, quite far, um, and they're, you can put them at any length you want to. They've got a really cool uh, mechanism that locks them into position. And in fact, the harder you push down on the lock mechanism, the tighter the, it is. So, um, and then going across the um, top and middle, we have, um, I, this particular company had no pole that was long enough to go across the middle, so I got um, two of their, um, uh, they're called telescoping curtain rods that go across the center. I got two of them. Um, I cut off uh, with the Dremel tool, I sliced off one end of it, and I've, I've got them hooked together with a pole in the middle that wraps around the outsides of them and tightens down so that it also is adjustable. But when I was in this process and looking for one like that and talking to people, um, what they told me is um, it's impossible to do the length that I wanted without having the pole in the middle dip down. And ours does indeed, if you look at this pole that goes across the middle, it does indeed dip down, it sags in the middle. So um, what I was told is that I would have to have a pole going up the center to hold it up, but I, um, found a better solution which is my screen is pulled up taut and around a little bit the, in the middle and then as you go out towards the edges you'll see that the screen towards the edges of the pole actually comes down and that's the advantage of having the velcro straps that could be different lengths. The screen up there hangs down a bit on the sides and it's pulled taut in the middle so that it takes up the sag that that pole has that's in the middle. Mm -hmm. The pole is a heavy duty pole, but there's no way that you're gonna get a pole that length without having sag in it. So this is how we managed to do it. Um, our setup, because we did it this way, costs far less than anything you're gonna find online. Um, I paid $380 for the curtain rods um, on the outsides and the, and the weights and the pole across the middle. And this screen I found online, um, as I said, for three hundred and seventy four dollars all right now the sound system is going to be next is very particular sound system so let's take a look at the sound system out here all right because we're opera singers we don't um, we don't use microphones so uh, we don't want to have speakers that are surround sound out in the theater because if we did, the people in the back of the theater wouldn't be able to hear the singer. So we want to have the sound more contained as if we had a real orchestra. So we're going to have it all up on stage. So um, what I have is uh, some monitor speakers coming across the front here. I have two monitor speakers on the sides. 
our monitor speakers are tilted up so that and tilted towards where the singers sing. Okay. So we have two on the sides. We have some simple speakers sitting um, across the middle so that we got get the orchestration. Ideally, we have an orchestra behind us. Whoever put the orchestra out in front of us, opera singers, wasn't really thinking about what we have to deal with by, what, by singing over the top of an orchestra. So it's better to have an orchestra behind you. Um, we have, these are our monitor speakers. And then we have two house speakers. This is a little teeny tiny theater. We have two house speakers. And those house speakers are tilted halfway between um, going out towards the audience and going in towards our singers. If you look, this is a very small theater. We have 110 seats in here. It's a great place to do intimate opera. Um, all right, now, our lights are also very particular lights. Um, so I'm going to um, turn off the lights in here and then we're gonna look at our lighting system. Our lighting system has to be very particular because of the rear screen projection. Um, you don't want to have any lights hitting the screen that will wash out the projection. So um, I made up a lighting system. Um, I did some exploration. Um, these lights are called, these are lead pin spot lights. And I got these uh, because they have a very uh, contained and particular um, light that doesn't have a lot of dissolution. We wanted it to keep it contained so that it doesn't shine onto our screen. So they're actually not made to do what I'm using them for. Um, they come with, they're, they're designed to be on, a, a, it's called a disco ball um, to make it glitter and shine. And so they, they come with these lenses that actually make the light smaller. What I did is I took out the lenses um, so that the light is a little bigger. And I also put in, um, I put in a, and I can't remember the name of it, a thing in the front that will make it a kind of a soft, uh, a soft light instead of a really white light. Um, I made it uh, colored, so it's kind of an orangish color, but not really orange, to just give the singers a little bit more color. But we have light trees on either side, and the light trees, we have to direct every one of these lights so that they're shining in a particular direction so they actually don't go on to our screen. All right, we're going to take a look at our sound system again. We're going to look at the mixer board next. We have a very simple sound system, very, very basic, so we don't need to have a huge mixer board because we don't have mics on our singers. All we have to deal with is the orchestra. So for our mixer board, um, these two cables right here, these XLR cables, are coming out of the DVD player. And, uh, they're going into those direct boxes and through two XLR cables and they're going into two um, microphone inputs right here. So these two are going into the mixer board. You want to make sure that your gain lights are blinking when you test out your sound system but not steady. They have to be on and blinking. Um, and then you can set the various levels down here on the mixer board. This particular cable this one is going to our monitor speakers. You can see it's in um, an auxiliary out. Um, it's only one cable. So this one goes up onto stage into our far right monitor speaker. And then from that one, it's split two times. All the cables are back behind the screens. It's split off to the center speakers and then split off again. There's uh, another speaker that's on the far left over there that you can't see at the moment. So um, that's, it's a pretty simple sound system. Right here, this is a snake that is already in the house. Um, it comes with a theater. Um, we have the two house speakers and this is um, coming out of the mixer board, going out to the house speakers. And as I said, this one is already in place here in the theater. So that's how we hooked into the theater sound system. Um, we're also uh, videotaping our setup from back here so that we have a documentation and record of all of our opera performances. 
And I think that's all. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.